Good morning, my fellow believers. Welcome to Canada, frozen Canada. We live in igloos. Some people might think that. I think one brother, Tony Nungesser, he thinks we live in igloos in Canada. Well, we might as well. We could build an igloo and probably stay warm in it. But I'll tell you, this cold has sunk in in Alberta. Minus 25 Celsius. I don't know if you know what the temperature is in Fahrenheit because I don't. But anyway, minus 25 Celsius. It's cold, cold, cold. Freezing, freezing, freezing. Anyway, yesterday I talked about the vexation. The vexation during this lifetime. You know, we have vexations in life. Now this morning, a couple of things occurred where it could bring vexation. My neighbor... He come over to the door this morning and said, our cats are going out and going into his garbage. So he's gonna set up traps. So now we have to keep our cats in. I didn't let him out in the first place. My wife and son did. You know, I, I would have preferred to keep them in completely. It's winter time now and they don't need to go out, but they're constantly scratching and meowing at the door. So now we gotta train them to stay in. They have litter boxes inside here and they don't need to go out. So that's a training thing and I'll have to train them cats. Because my wife does not. She'll let them out on an instant. Especially when they're scratching and meowing and annoying her. She'll let them out. That's one vexation that happened this morning. Another one was last night. My landlord called and said the electric bill is high. So now he wants to do a walk through the, through the house. And I don't know why the electrical bill is high. Not sure. There's a lady that lives down in the downstairs suite. The granny suite. So he wants to do a walkthrough through the whole house, which is fine. I have no problem on that. But I don't know what's causing the electrical bill to go high. We keep the temperature at a pretty much steady level during the winter. So I guess we'll see on that. So these vexations in life, they can be as small and miniature as possible. But still, they're vexations. They can get at you. Okay? But what you got to do is have an attitude towards God. He is the one that's operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. So whatever occurs matters not because God has it scripted prior to this, no matter what. So whatever comes your way, vexation, sufferings, pain, all that, it's part of the plan. Okay, I found a little article this morning and I love printing these off and reading them on the show because they're awesome. They're just tremendously awesome. Now this one's called Figures of Speech. Enjoyers in Expectation of Ionian Life by A.E. Nock. Have we life or have we not? Is the question, which is not fully clear in the minds and hearts of many a believer. In the first flush of faith, we cling to the great truth that we have Ionian life. Romans chapter 6, verse 22. We get hold of life Ionian. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And enjoy the certainty of life during the eons of the eons. Later, when we begin to realize that we are not yet enjoying the fullness of life, which will be ours in resurrection, and read of the expectation of Ionian life, Titus 1-2, which God promises, the question arises. Do we now enjoy, actually enjoy Ionian life, or is it a future experience? The great stress laid upon having quote-unquote eternal life in even evangelical circles the small place given to the resurrection and the total, almost total lack of light upon vivification. Vivification, that word is not used in the institution. When have you heard that in a church? I've never ever heard it growing up. So no, vivification is not used. The original translation. Vivification is life beyond the reach of death. Has led to much confusion in the minds and hearts of thoughtful believers. They ask themselves, if I have, quote-unquote, eternal life, why should I die at all? How can it be, quote-unquote, eternal if it is interrupted by death? If one with, quote-unquote, eternal life dies once, what will hinder him from dying again? What will keep him from the second death? There must be something radically wrong in our understanding of these truths when they are so contradictory. Everlasting, quote-unquote, or Ionian life must not allow death in any form. If it is, what, what's, na what's its name implies? As commonly taught, it is not, quote-unquote, everlasting at all. 
until the resurrection. We hope to help the saints to see clearly on this subject and clear away the contradiction of having quote-unquote everlasting life and then descending into death as if the, we had nothing of the kind. The worst feature of this confusion is that it throws a thick fog over the scriptures. It, encouraged, it encourages the blind, acceptance of tradition, and discourages intelligent investigation. For many years I was troubled about this matter, but feared to bring it up, lest I be accursed of rejecting God's word. Almost all saints simply accept it without realizing how contradictory it is. If they are aware of this in some measure, they put credulity in place of faith and believe it because it is a, it is a teaching of the great in Christendom. It is astonishing how much faith, quote-unquote, is placed in the teaching of the evangelical church rather than the word of God. There is a distinction to be observed between having and enjoying. It is, it is possible to possess riches of which we cannot, we can make no use at the time. We may have eonian life, yet not partake of its benefits until our vivification at the presence of Christ. In this sense, all believers have eonian life. There's no question as to their partaking of life in its fullest form, when they receive immortality or incorruptibility at the return of Christ. Perhaps all are clear as to this, so we will take it for granted. Furthermore, in contrast to the unbeliever, who is also raised from the dead for a brief period during the eons at the great white throne, it refers to life in a superlative sense. We shall not only live during the eons as the unbeliever, during his judging, but have a superabundance of vitality which brings with it power and glory and joy. In order to express this, the scriptures express this, the scriptures use a forceful figure. Not the living but the dead stand before the great white throne. In contrast to this, it is the resurrection of life which ushers the saints into their Ionian allotment. All resurrection must be accompanied by life. But incorruption does not accompany that of the unbeliever. His is a resurrection of death, the saints of life. Making alive or vivification includes deathlessness, immortality. But the question still remains, do we enjoy this life now? And if so, how can we die? Eonian life lasts for the eons. There could be no interruption by death. This applies not only to the body of Christ, but to all saints for all, for all have life eonian. The stern realities of our present path, the weakness, the corruption, and even death of true believers makes it impossible for us to teach that the resurrection is past already, and that we now in full enjoyment of and then and that we are now in possession of full enjoyment of life eonian, beyond the reach of death. Yet we should not base our faith or lack of faith on our experience, but on revelation. On the other hand, our lives have been transformed by the power of faith, which is Jesus Christ's faith, so that we really do enter in into the enjoyment of a minute measure of vital blessing. We do not merely live on as did before we believed. Our spirits, and as a result, our souls are vitally affected, so that there is a foretaste of the coming bliss. This indeed does not extend to our flesh, but it marks out as alive, in contrast to the dead unbelievers about us. The solution to our problem seems to be found in the passage quoted at the beginning. We are enjoyers in expectation of the allotment of Ionian life. Titus 3.7 We have it and we enjoy the prospect of realizing it. It is ours. And the certainty of the future experience operates in us powerfully in, anticipa in, in anticipation. Besides this, we have an earnest of the spirit, not the body, which will be ours then. And this imparts a foretaste of the life. So that our question demands a double answer. We not only have Ionian life, but enjoy it in expectation. It is more than a mere promise. It is a vital force in our present path. We already have the consummation, Eonian life, 
Romans 6.22, it, it is God's gracious gift. So it is that he who sows for the Spirit, from the Spirit shall he be reaping Aeonian life. Yet he who is sowing, sowing for his own flesh, from the flesh shall be reaping corruption. Galatians 6, 8. This refers to the believer. The amount of Ionian life he enjoys depends on the amount, of, the amount of the spirit he sows. This does not concern his future life. For in this passage, corruption is the antithesis of Ionian life. The less corruption we have, the more life. The very fact that we can reap corruption shows that it, this is confined to the present. In the future, we shall put on incorruption. So it comes also that the one who has this Ionian life can die. The life is only in his spirit, not in his flesh. God's word brings future realities very close to us by means of marvelous figures of speech. We are a new creation. This is confined to our spirits. But who can deny the power of it in our lives? And so in spirit, we already enjoy that which cannot be ours in flesh so long as we are mortals. The flesh must await until the future. And so it is with the only in life. Though we, though we possess it and enjoy it in our spirits now, that does not imply that the resu resurrection has already occurred. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18, or that we will not die, die in order that it can occur. In the case of the Lord, does not come before. We will not enjoy Ionian life, in fact, until our expectation has been fulfilled and our mortal bodies put, have put on immortality. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to continue with this article. It's a huge one. So, resurrection is not past. And that's what I'll go with tomorrow. So, stay warm. Grace and peace from Canada. I love you all.